Right, good afternoon. Here we are at Sword and Station again on the uh, 16th of January 2014. So this is our first lupin harvest of the year. And uh, you can see right here the mob of uh, ewes and lambs. They're walking around in the lupins. A bit hard to get close to them and disturb, not to disturb, and not disturb their eating. But they've been um, hanging around here and as you can see they've been grazing the leaves off, um, or the lamina off most of the lupin plants in this corner anyway. And um, we'll be seeing in the second part of this video where they've been grazing it in the uh, paddocks next door. So at the moment we're um, seeing a lot of the grass with the seed head out. Um, it's dying off and we've still got the tall lupin stem sticking up and the flowers are starting to be eaten away out there and we're seeing a lot of more pod um, with our yield and also a lot of stem particularly in the paddocks that have been grazed. So um, as I will do last time, hand over to Dr Black for his uh, latest update on the uh, sheep and their grazing experiment. So yeah, we've just finished doing the monthly cuts and like every month we've been taking three dry matter cuts from each of the five paddocks and uh, just based on the fresh weights that we've measured in the field now, um, I suspect that the dry matter for the lupins, the pre-grazing lupins now, will be around about 25 to 30 percent, maybe even 35 percent, uh, given that we're post-flowering um, and we've got a lot of stem there and that stem is safe to, to dry off. Uh, the yields, pre-grazing yields, I would estimate to be close to about 9 to 12 tonnes of dry matter per hectare in this pre-grazing paddock. Uh, and that's actually very similar to what we measured uh, for last year. Uh, so here we've got around about 100 ewes with their lambs um, and they uh, being tailed uh, last month in December before Christmas and uh, they've recovered from that now and they're looking very good. So shortly we'll get a try and get a close up of the lambs uh, and the mob. And like last month, we're on a two-week rotation, just slowly moving around the five paddocks in the grazing trial. And today I just wanted to show you what the lambs are looking like, uh, and two, trying to give some evidence that they are actually eating the lupins, and try to show you what parts of the lupin plant that they're actually eating. Okay, and we can see some um, ewes having a bustle on them there, eating away the lamina, can't we? straight in front of us um, and also lambs are having a bit of a tromp at it too. Um, so now we'll just move over to a fence line where you can see the difference between a grazed and a non-grazed paddock and uh, we'll start again with the video there. So we're just watching some of the ewes eating um, the leaves so you can see one there really getting stuck into it and um, also the lambs which are a little bit more difficult to see seeing as they're lower down. But uh, quite clearly they're quite happy um, tucking into the lamina. There's one having a go at the pine tree over there as well. Um, but certainly eating the green material that's on offer. Tend to leave a lot of the stem. Alright, so this is part two of the lupin video um, at the January harvest and uh, this is quite clear, uh, this part of the trial, uh, we're on a fence line now and you'll be able to see the difference between a grazed and a non-grazed part of um, the lupin plant at this time of year. So on this side what we're looking at, we still can see quite a bit of flower and a fair bit of pod around, um, so that pod will shatter as we continue through January. Um, and ripen off and so that'll spread its seed around um, now that it's fully elongated. Um, but as we look over the fence we can see quite a lot of stem left over uh, that they haven't grazed um, and also some small um, leaves and petioles regrowing from the base of the crown but very clearly that they select the leaf lamina quite heavily um, 
and so Alistair will just talk about that now. And what we end up left with is a, a hollow, quite a fibrous stem that's easy to break off from the plant. So uh, yeah, this is what you see here is a typical post-grazing uh, cover that we're uh, leaving behind in our fortnightly rotational grazing system. So um, on average the post-grazing herbage mass that we're leaving behind based on previous records is around about four to five tonnes of dry matter per hectare and most of that is going to be uh, a combination of green stem, as Travis pointed out, uh, dead stem just lying on the ground and most of that would have been from, from this season's growth and a little bit of laminate that the animals haven't consumed and uh, we'll also see some, some regrowth of new leaves for laminate as well. Uh, what we see the ewes eating uh, first are, uh, are the flowers, they really have a, a strong preference for the flowering part so you might have saw in the previous footage uh, the ewes actually trying to graze quite tall in the profile uh, so they're grazing those uh, flowers and then they're moving on to some of the leaves and also the, the laminae or the, leaf, uh, the petiole or the leaf stem, that, that's quite palatable as well. So um, last month I was saying about the digestibility of the leaf material, that's around about 80-82% dry matter digestibility. And that digestibility of the leaf is actually quite constant right throughout the whole growing season. Okay? It's just the amount of leaf material available that changes throughout the year and of course the stem content as well. So about four and a half, five tons of dry meter per hectare is what you see here. Uh, and what we're looking at here is around about 10 to 12 dry matter, tons of dry meter per hectare. Mm. So for me, um, to ask the question, do merino sheep eat lupins? Uh, this is an emphatic yes. So we don't have much of an issue in terms of, um, you know, acceptability by stock preference. Uh, we're seeing that the animals, if made to in this paddock grazing system uh, will eat the lupins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they came out of this paddock on uh, Monday of this week, today's Thursday, so we're seeing a little bit of regrowth of new, of new leaf tissue and that's quite important in a rotational grazing system uh, because this new leaf growth will feed the ewes uh, post weaning when the ewes come back into here to uh, around about late February, early March to start their uh, pre-mating nutrition. So uh, new leaf growth comes from the base of the lupin plant. So we've got several plants here. Uh, a lot of the old stem has been broken off and these stems will not grow anymore. Once the uh, crown um, apical bud has been grazed off, uh, that stem will finish its life and new regrowth will come from basal buds or buds at the bottom of the plant, just uh, above the soil surface and that's what we're seeing here. So our new growth, our new yield for, for the next grazing round, and this paddock will be grazed again, is coming from this material here. Okay. Cool. So at this point now, if you wanted to, um, you think it's safe to, we could cut away these stems if we wanted to by mower topping or anything, but if you, in terms of economically, it's quite all right just to leave them, isn't it? They'll naturally die off into the next season and um, break down into the soil obviously. Correct, I think in a, in a low input system, low cost system, one might be inclined to leave this, this steam material behind. Um, uh, but we have evidence to say that if we cut this, this stem off, any stem that's still uh, got part of the leaf, uh, the flower remaining, if we cut that off, we might be able to break the apical dominance, the, the, the trigger in the plant that tells it to, um, to start or start growing new leaf tissue at the base of the plant. If we cut those dead stems off, we can potentially um, promote more regrowth of the plant. Right. To, to do that in a, in a farm system, a grazing system, um, it might coincide with perhaps post weaning. So next month we'll be weaning the lambs off the ewes. Uh, and if, if we wanted to, we could keep the ewes in the grazing rotation and make them uh, work off some of the stem a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, they might not be able to do that quite successfully. 
or we could go in and, and, and top that material off uh, yeah. and then the plant will regrow from the base. Yep, that's cool. But generally we see it left around here, don't we, at most of our trial sites, we tend to leave it alone. Okay. So very clearly the difference between the two is basically the leaf material, isn't it? Um, the main difference between them, there's still a little bit of flower in the ungrazed part, but um, stem would be about the same. It's just the Correct. amount of laminar leaf material around. I'd estimate there's about three to five tons of dry matter in the leaf and PTL material and the flower material in that crop there, the rest being uh, green and dead stem. Yep. Um, so effectively you could say that um, if they've eaten most of the leaf PTL material here, they've, they've consumed about three, four tons of dry matter. Mm. By comparison of the pre and post growth. Okay, that's cool. Alright, thanks Al. And uh, that's basically the loop and harvest for the 16th of January, so we'll see you again next month.